Textual Builder Supply is pleased to present you with this recording of the technical question that is listed in the title of this video. This call may be monitored and recorded for quality assurance. Hey, B Supply, this is Richard. Hello, Richard. It's Jessica. How are you? Good, yourself? Doing just fine. Thanks for asking. Awesome. I was calling on the Xeno or so I can try to understand this a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Bear with me one moment. No problem. Okay, so we are looking at, you've got a client who's doing 23 grade one Stanley small format lock sets and 21, I think double cylinder small format, uh, yeah, they're double cylinder deadbolts. And I wanted to talk to you about uh, me jumping in and making sure on the order that we have everything we need to do the work internally. So what what's on the order obviously are the le are the grade one cylindrical levers, the grade one double cylinder deadbolts. So 23 and 21, that's going to be a total of 65 cylinders. 42 for the 21 deadbolts, obviously. 23 for the grade one levers. We've got 65 cores. And again, this is about making sure that we have um, everything that we need to be able to do the job for this guy. And that is definitely what we want to do. Um, so all of these are going to be what I, what is called, not what I call, but what, what I called SKD1. So SKD stands for single keyed. That's literally a LOA industry terminology that says you have a single keyed group. It's like saying KA, but there's there's a difference between key to like and SKD1 in the sense that they both mean the same thing. So if you think about this client wants all of these locks key to like, he just wants the same bidding for all 23 levers and 21 deadbolts. Apparently there's a lot of common doors in this in this building. So every homeowner is going to be given a key, which isn't the case because they only want a total of 12 cut keys. And because these are small format, that has to include the control keys, which there may be three or whatever it is. The control keys are what allow you to insert and remove the cores from the locks or the housings. And the client said, I just need these all key to like, one key for all of them. Okay, fine. So what we're doing is keying them all alike. Key to like is what they are, but key to like is, in an industry, is not an industry term that's in a glossary, so to speak. The proper way to call it would be, it's a single keyed group. Anything that's in the group is the same bidding. So if the bidding is three, zero, two, seven, eight, one, or eight, five, that's the bidding for the SKD one group. You could have an SKT, SKD2, SKD3, and so on. And all you're saying is whatever is an SKD1, they're all key to like. That's what that means. But what's important about SKD1 is if you use that terminology, like the factory ought to know, record that bidding because this single keyed group is part of a system. And this is part of a system. Right now, it's only these SKD1 locks that are the system, but in the future we may have an opportunity to expand this system where the guy says, well, okay, so we did all these common area doors. Well, it turns out that those cylinders, we wanted them key to like for construction, and we never told you that. Now what we want to do is pull all those cylinders out. Now we want to master key them. So the point of the matter is, SKD1 should tell the distributor, the locksmith, the factory, the project manager, someone's going to retain, someone's going to record, someone's going to keep secret and safe the bidding, the seven-digit yeah. number I just said, whatever it was. I actually wrote one down, 3720495. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. Now, why that's important is if the guy were to say, if the client were to say to us in the future, yeah, now we're going to key all these differently. We need to know what SKD1 is so that we never use that again because we have all those gotcha. keys out there. We never want those yeah. to work again. So that's why I'm calling it single keyed one. It's the first group. Now, what you've noticed that I've added are the things that 
a locksmith needs to do the job. We've ordered the locks, the deadbolts, we've ordered the uncombinated cores, and we've got the key blanks. But you need a pin kit. And for doing small format, you need, it's a lot easier if you have a capping block and you have a ejector tool. So those items were added. They're stuff that you don't have to worry about in terms of knowing what they are. But I know looking at my kit, I don't have a good kit for doing just Falcon. I have one for best that works. I have a generic one that works, but I want one intended for Falcon. And that's the Falcon 1404 pin kit. I want one from the factory for their system. I've got a capping block and I've got, um, I think I have a capping block. Oh, I've got a couple of things on there. I've got the tools necessary to do it. But then what I also ordered was 500 springs, the proper spring, because we've got 65 cylinders. Each one of those requires seven springs. So 100 per pack, that's 500. I also ordered two packages of spring covers. The Falcon system is a slide cover, whereas Best is an individually capped cover, and I like Falcon because it's easier in terms of work. So I've ordered a couple of hundred covers, even though we only need 65, I'd like to have some here in case. I then have on the order the pin kit for, uh, the pin kit I want to use for this job. I actually have two of them because I want one for myself when I do work. I don't share my tools um, unless I absolutely have to. Um, so that's why those other parts are on there. Do you have any questions about the locksmithing about all of that? No. Okay. You doing that, uh, yeah, sort of um, jarred my memory <laughs> from whenever I went to the locksmithing class. So, yes. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. But I do understand. So. Okay. So having said that, you know, it's all going to look really good. And we're just going to start doing it. Barb uh, here knows how to combinate small format. I taught her how to do that. This is a really easy job. And let me just say about how or why it's easy. When you combinate A2, there's A2, A3, and A4. Those are systems that best came up with many decades ago. And it has everything to do with the science or the relationship between pins. Doesn't We don't have to go further than that. A2 is by far the absolute common that exists with A4, and then there's still some A3. So A2 is what we'll combinate in. So. Okay. What, what makes this such an easy job is all we have to have is how many keys have to work each of these cores? Well, the answer is two. One to operate it, and then the other key to operate the control share line so that you can insert and remove the core. The control key, all it does, it doesn't work the cylinder. It wouldn't operate the lock, but it would allow you to remove or insert the core into the housing or the lock itself. So we're going to have the change key, which is SKD1 and we're gonna have a control key. And we're gonna record both of those biddings, obviously, so that we have them. So that in the future, if we were to change these, we would never continue those cores uh, in the new system. And we would literally take those, core back, those cores back and we would eject all the pins out of the cores and start from scratch. Okay, so this is easy because we're gonna combinate, we're gonna load the pins for the change key, which will be 372.0495. Then we're going to add the pins for the control shear line. And it will be, it could be almost the same key. It could be off, it could be different in only one chamber or different in one through seven chambers. After that, you take, let's say in the first chamber, I had a five as the cut for the change key and a nine cut there for the control key. So here's a magic number. Remember Michael Jordan. 23. 23 is a magic number. Not only in baseball, but in A2 locksmithing as well. So you've got a 5 pin already loaded. Then you're going to add a 4 master pin to get to the 9. That means in that chamber, either of those would actually work. Okay. But what you have to do is you have to actually add 10 to the control number. Uh, let's take a look at that real quick. Let's see what that is. I want to be sure I'm saying the right thing. I want to study it real fast. Okay, so we have quick ref quick reference to combinating best cylinders. Let's take a look. So you take the pin stack, which in this case is nine, subtract you minus you you subtract twenty three. <laughs> Minus 
minus 9 is 14, minus the control is 6. Is that how that works? Let's take a look. This is what I was looking for. How to pin a best A2 cylinder. That's based on the stack height equaling 23. For A2, 23 is the okay, stack height me. total. For A3 and A4, it's a different stack height, but this is just A2. How to pin it is, you're going to observe your standard keying rules when you're doing two different keys at a single shear line. So we've got a master in the first chamber, a master and a change with a one and a seven. Pin your one and then add a six master pin. Add 10 to the control, that makes 17. From 17, subtract your, your pin total of seven from here, that will give you 10. Add a 10 master pin or build up pin, and then subtract that total from 23. So you're gonna have a total of 17, 10, the one, and then the six, and that will give you a six top pin. And that's how you pin a best A2. Subtract that total from 23. So you're gonna have a total of 17. My control is... Master pin or build up. Give you 10. Add a 10 master pin or build up pin, and then subtract that total from 23. So you're gonna have a total of 17, 10, the six master pin. Add 10 to the control, that makes 17. From 17, subtract your your pin total of seven from. Okay, 19 minus nine equals 10. Here, that will give you 10. Add a 10 uh, master pin or build up pin, and then subtract that total from 23. So you're gonna have a total uh, of 17, 10, four. the one, and then the six, and that will give okay. you. So in this case, what we're going to end up doing is we take, we add 10 to the master key, uh, to the control key. So our control key is 19. You don't have to memorize this stuff, but we subtract from that our pin total, which in this case is 9. So we're back to 10. So then we subtract all of that from 23 and we get up, our, we get our build up pin. So that should be 5, 4, 10, 23, 9, and 4. Yeah, that's what I came up with. Yeah, okay. So what we end up doing is adding 10 to the control key, which is 19. We subtract the 5 bottom and the 4 master. That gives us 10. We take 10 plus 4 plus 5, subtract that from 23, and we get 4. So our pin stack for that first chamber is going to be a 5 bottom pin with a 4 master pin with a 10 control pin or a driver pin, and then a four top pin, and that will come up with 23. Okay, so that's how all that, that works. None of that is stuff you have to know, but I wanted you to appreciate or be aware of what I just went through for that one calculation. It has to be done for every single chamber, of which this is a seven pin, for every core on the job. So it's, it's literally one times seven times 65. So 65 times 7, 5, 3, 455 times we have to calculate what's happening in every single chamber to know what pins to load. Then every chamber will have different, well, they may not all be different, but they'll have different calculations. So that's why you notice that when someone charges you to combinate small format, it always costs more because there's a lot more labor doing it, a lot more. And I like doing the Falcon because we don't have to individually cap them because you're already doing a ton of work. I just like to reduce it. So sorry, but I, that was important to toss <laughs> into this so that you at least um, have the benefit of, of hearing it and appreciating it and maybe being able to tell somebody. What else you got? Um, no, I don't have anything. I'll be sure to thank Barb. <laughs> yeah, she's going to be the one to thank for sure. She's the one that needs to get the uh, crueler from Dunkin' Donuts on Friday. <laughs> she's awesome. She is awesome. All right. I can tell. Awesome. All righty. Well, I appreciate your help. I'll talk to you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Architectural Builders Supply hopes you have enjoyed this program. Please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.